Mr. Colvany, do you have any signs at all that the UK is willing to compromise to get to a deal, or is it looking more likely now that there'll be a no-deal Brexit? No, I, I still think there's a good chance we'll get a trade deal uh, before the end of the year. Um, but even if we don't, uh, there's still a lot of work to do in terms of implementing the international treaty that facilitated the UK leaving the EU uh, that was agreed this time last year. So there are two negotiations in parallel. One is to implement what's already been agreed, which, of course, the, the British government is now threatening to legislate against. Uh, and then secondly, there is a future relationship agreement, uh, the most important part of which is a trade agreement that would avoid tariffs and quotas being Im uh, I impacting on trade between the EU and the UK. Uh, and I think there is a good chance we can get agreements on both of those things before the end of the year. Uh, but certainly the, the tactics of the British government uh, in terms of introducing legislation to effectively break the international treaty that they signed up to less than 12 months ago has added uh, a really unnecessary uh, uh, tension to mm -hmm. these negotiations. And what was already a complex task has become even more difficult. But that being said, I think not agreeing a trade deal between the EU and the UK between now and the end of the year would be an enormous failure of politics and of diplomacy, uh, would be damaging to the British economy and indeed the Irish economy uh, and to some other uh, EU uh, countries also economically. So I think the incentive is there to get a deal done. We know what the outstanding issues are and they are not insurmountable. But uh, Minister, so are I'm you hopeful. saying that you would negotiate a trade deal even if Boris Johnson persists with the internal market bill? Well, no. I mean, if there's a, if there's a trade deal done, uh, well, then two of the three issues that the Internal Market Bill proposes to deal with uh, effectively are solved. Um, so if there's a trade deal done, uh, the contentious elements of the Internal Market Bill largely become irrelevant, quite frankly. So despite the fact that uh, a British government making a commitment to breach international law through domestic legislation and the impact of that uh, on relationships has been very negative, Despite that, uh, the issues that are outstanding that need to be resolved are issues that I believe can be resolved. And if they are in the weeks ahead, well, then I think the problems relating to that, to that internal market, market bill will, will fade away because the bill won't be necessary, or at least the elements of the bill that are contentious won't be necessary. And indeed, the EU has threatened legal action as one recourse if Boris Johnson persists with the internal market bill. The deadline of October 15th, if that's not met, do you imagine talks will go on past that and that there will be a down-to-the-wire moment? Or will October 15th be the hard deadline? No, I mean, certainly from an EU point of view, uh, October 15th is not the hard deadline. I mean, that's a deadline that was set by the British Prime Minister. Uh, he has said that if there's not a deal by then, uh, both sides should go their separate ways. Um, I don't think that's helpful, quite frankly. I mean, if we're close to a deal at that point or if we're making progress, I think the likely uh, scenario is that both sides will continue to negotiate uh, right up until the end of October. Uh, to try to finalize a deal. I mean, the stakes are very high here. You know, these are two big economies, uh, the EU single market and uh, the UK economy. Uh, the idea that they could fail to come to a, even a very thin basic trade agreement that, that would avoid tariffs and quotas and instead be forced to trade under WTO rules that involves tariffs and quotas on multiple products and the damage that that would do, uh, surely that is a motivation uh, for both sides to to find a way of compromising on the outstanding issues, uh, which I believe we can do mm -hmm. uh, to get a deal. If that doesn't happen uh, and there is no trade deal, there is still, of course, an international obligation in law yes. on the British government to implement in full uh, the withdrawal agreement that they signed up to and the protocol on Ireland and Northern Ireland, which, of course, is designed to protect the peace process uh, and the Good Friday Agreement. Uh, to ensure that relationships on the island of Ireland mm -hmm. are protected and maintained and the all-island economy between north and south is not disrupted uh, by the interruption of an internal border on well, the island of Ireland, you said uh, which the, certainly won't happen. You said to the Aspen Institute earlier that the UK was taken aback by US support for obviously you know, the Good Friday Agreement holding and for all parties that were party to that to be upstanding in their holding of that. How do you know that the UK has been taken aback by this? And you know, how, how 
concerned with the UK be about UK-US relations were the UK to start ignoring or breaching the Good Friday Agreement? Well, look, we know that uh, Prime Minister Boris Johnson uh, has attached an enormous amount of importance to being able to do a trade deal with the United States uh, transatlantic. Um, we know that the, the British Foreign Secretary, Dominic Raab, came to Washington uh, in the last few weeks to try to explain the British position here. Uh, but we also know that the message coming from both Democrats and Republicans uh, has been very clear, uh, that if the British government behaves in a way uh, that undermines uh, the delicate and really important uh, withdrawal treaty that both sides signed up to, as in the EU and the UK, uh, and if they breach that now in a way that undermines peace on the island of Ireland, uh, that that would be uh, considered to be a real problem in Washington, uh, and it would impact on the ability of Britain to get a trade deal in place. Uh, and I think that messaging has been very blunt and very clear. Uh, it's a reminder that many people in the United States care about the peace process that many of them have been involved in. Uh, don't forget that it really was a triumph of U.S. diplomacy uh, to support both, both Britain and Ireland and political parties in Northern Ireland and to create a peace process there that has lasted for more than two decades. Indeed, Mick Mulvaney, uh, the special envoy, is over there now for his first trip, in fact, so we know this. Have you reassurances from Republicans as well as from Democrats? We know you're meeting, for example, with House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, but what if there were to be another Trump four-year term or, for example, the Senate doesn't flip to the Democrats? Oh, I mean, I mean, we have very clear uh, messages from both Republicans and Democrats. I mean, I had breakfast yesterday with uh, Mick Mulvaney in Dublin. Uh, Mick Mulvaney was on Irish media yesterday making it very clear uh, that if the UK behave in a way uh, through the Brexit negotiations that undermines the peace process in Ireland, uh, there won't be uh, a trade deal between the EU and the UK uh, because uh, not only Democrats but Republicans would frustrate that process. Um, so uh, the US and many people here, particularly Irish America, wants to see a successful peace process protected and sustained through Brexit, despite the challenges and the complexity of that. Uh, and we have an agreement in international law now signed up to by the British government and the EU to do that, mm -hmm. to protect the peace process in the context of the United Kingdom leaving the European Union.